Hey there, I'm Judy Kroon. Welcome to another episode of Laugh Long and Prosper. Shelf help with a dash of humor. I believe that humor is one of our best coping mechanisms, especially when we're facing stress. Today's podcast is sponsored by Truel Social. Truel Social knows to be visible online, you have to be fully committed in who you are and what you do. You must adopt the right mindset. Steer your ship to the SS Optimization and Truel Social to get your sailing on course. Check out truelsocial.com. A lot of people often ask, how did you get into stand-up comedy so many years back? Well, it was a weird path. I always wanted to be a veterinarian. I even worked at a vet for three years. Unfortunately, during my second year of university, 70% of my fruit flies and 50% of my final mark flew out of the biology class window. I was devastated. In my mind, my dream of becoming a veterinarian was over. Wow, looking back on that time, I only wish present me would have been around to tell past me not to quit, to do all the things that I tell other people now to do, no matter what. Be positive, lean on your sense of humor and gratitude to get through those rough spots, persevere, and forgive yourself. But at the time, I was a completely different person. I saw myself as a total failure. And I can tell you, if you're a student listening to this podcast, don't quit. Talk to a school counselor. Change your program. Get into something that you really like, but don't quit. As the Confucius quote goes, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Now, I didn't stop. I just ended up taking a different path. A path that I had never, ever thought of. It was like a bolt of lightning that hit me. This is what happened. So I went home that night and I cried in front of the TV. Late night comedy was on. It was the uh, Tonight Show. Joan Rivers was the guest comedian filling in for Johnny Carson. She was hilarious. I actually stopped crying and started laughing. (laughs) And then a light bulb went off. I decided I was going to do stand-up comedy. And this is where my right, bright, creative brain kicked in and saved me from my left, logical, self-loathing brain. Because at the time, I was so angry at myself. I took a couple of quick improv classes for a few months and then loaded up my car and drove to the States. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but I did spots on amateur comedy nights. I even entered a few comedy competitions up and down the West Coast. Uh, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Reno, Las Vegas, Los Angeles. I had a blast and I made some really good lifelong friends. But looking back, it was a scary time, totally unknown, like, you know, just me out there on the highway. I don't know where I got the courage. But after about three months of being on the road, I came back to Canada and I was one of five full-time female stand-up comedians working across the country. Humor also, uh, luckily, allowed me to carve a career into morning radio and motivational speaking. And every day I feel blessed at how my life turned out. Humor saved me. Okay, so this is where Joan Rivers comes in. In 2011, a local promoter knew me from my radio days. He asked me if I would open for Joan Rivers here in Toronto at Roy Thompson Hall. I couldn't believe it. My life came around full circle. And this is basically what happened. Before the show, I met her backstage. She was actually pretty quiet, nervous probably. I mean, it was amazing to see that even after doing comedy for 40 years, a veteran like Joan Rivers, those pre-show nerves never quite leave anybody. And I was a bit nervous too. I was only doing a fraction of the time she was doing off the top. And I would, uh, the, the process would be I would interview her on stage after I did my little routine, after she did her act for a full hour. And then we would talk to the audience made up of over 2,000 people. And the audience could ask questions. And, you know, that's what I was actually thinking about at the time. So anyway, everybody always used to ask me, well, what did Joan Rivers look like close up? And yes... She looks like she had work, a lot of work, but she was always the first person to tell you that. And she was also 78 years old at the time. So I went on first. 
The audience was great. They were in a fabulous mood. Whereas most comics want you to introduce them with 80 credits, Joan Rivers, a legend who had basically 8,000 credits, said, ah, heck, just bring me up. Joan Rivers then took the stage and the audience loved her. She was up there probably for about 50 minutes. It was an assortment of signature machine gun one-liners combined with some very funny and very sad stories about her life, most of which are covered in her edgy documentary, A Piece of Work. I highly recommend that you see A Piece of Work. Um, if you think for one second that Joan Rivers ever wants you to feel sorry, ever wanted you to feel sorry for her, like think again, you know, that documentary will hit you over the head with that message. No way. She was hardcore and old school right until the end. Now, after she finished her set, I joined her on stage. We talked for about 30 minutes. I had nothing to worry about. She was warm, humble, engaging, hilarious. So here are the seven things that I learned about Joan during that interview. Number one, Joan was a friend of Camilla and Charles. Get this, she had a crush on Charles. Uh, she said he was funny, charming, still held a door open for a lady. Joan said that if she had actively pursued Charles back in the day, Camilla wouldn't have stood a chance. <laughs> All right. Number two, at the age of 78, when we chatted at the time, Joan revealed that she still only slept about five or six hours a night. She said she didn't really have any hobbies. Her work was her hobby and she loved it. Number three, I asked Joan what was the first thing she bought when she quote unquote made it. And this was after her debut on The Tonight Show when Johnny Carson looked over and said to her, you're going to be a big star. She said she bought herself a mink. Okay, well, you know, I guess that was what people did back then, but highly don't recommend it. Number four, I asked Joan why she thought Johnny Carson was so mad at her for not taking the Tonight Show gig after he retired. Now, the story goes Carson had selected Joan Rivers, but she turned it down because Fox offered her her own late night show for 15 times the amount of money that NBC was going to pay her. I guess NBC figured that she should just be grateful to work at their network. Joan said when she called Johnny and told him she was taking the Fox gig, he slammed the phone down on her. She called him again and he slammed the phone down again. In fact, Carson never spoke to her after that. When Joan's husband Edgar committed suicide, Johnny didn't even contact her then. When Johnny's own son died in a car accident, Joan sent flowers to Johnny. Carson still didn't respond. Joan said Carson probably wouldn't have treated her that way if she were a man. She said she thought Carson was mad because she represented yet another woman leaving him. Number five, the fifth thing I learned. I said, aside from now being blackballed from NBC, Joan's show on Fox continued to have major problems. Joan's husband, Edgar, did not see eye to eye with network mogul Rupert Murdoch. They continued to fight and Fox eventually told Joan that she would have to fire her husband. When Joan refused, Fox fired them both. As she reveals in the documentary and on stage, the failure was too big for Edgar. He committed suicide. Joan said she wasn't even home when someone called the house with the news about Edgar. They told Melissa, her daughter, and asked her to pass the news on to Joan. Number six, I asked Joan Rivers, who was the craziest celebrity she ever interviewed on the red carpet. She said he wasn't crazy, but he was probably one of the nastiest, Russell Crowe. And finally, number seven, I asked her what Donald Trump was like. She said he was very professional and turned up on the set of Celebrity Apprentice where they worked together at 7 a.m. every morning. She also thinks, she also thought at the time that he would make a great president. Eek. Okay, well, maybe she was off on that one. But it was a terrific evening, and I will never forget it, even now. Joan was a pioneer and a trailblazer for female comics. And as stated in her documentary, A Piece of Work, River says that Phyllis Diller was doing comedy until she was 92. Joan Rivers hoped to beat that record. Sadly, she passed away at the age of 81 in 2014. Too soon. The result of a botched plastic surgery procedure. Such a loss. Although I think Joan would be one of the first people up there laughing at herself, going, plastic surgery, really? 
she was a workhorse. While I was probably still sleeping the next morning in my comfy little bed, Joan had already checked out of her hotel and she was already on a plane heading to Vancouver to do another show at 78 years old. I'll never forget, as was mentioned in her documentary, the thousands and thousands of jokes that he, she had filed away in her cabinet. I'll never forget that rat-a-tat style that came out of those thousands and thousands of jokes. And that rat-a-tat style also came out of the fact that she honed her chops on stages that weren't even comedy clubs back then. They didn't have comedy clubs. They were strip clubs. You know, you'd come on and do time before the dancers. And that audience did not want to see you. They did not want to see another woman on stage who was talking, much less telling jokes. And that was back then. So in honor of Joan, here are a few examples of her uh, great style. I don't exercise. If God wanted us to bend over, he'd put diamonds on the floor. My husband wanted to be cremated. I told him I'd scatter his ashes at Neiman Marcus. That way, I'd visit him every day. I like colonic irrigation because sometimes you find old jewelry. And finally, I said to my husband, my boobs have gone, my stomach's gone, say something nice about my legs. He said, blue goes with everything. Joan, I hope you're making them laugh up there. You showed me the way so many years ago, that fateful night when I was lying on my living room floor, crying over spilled fruit flies. I'm just glad that I got the opportunity to thank you in person. Until next time, folks, laugh long and prosper. And if you'd like to catch up on any of my other episodes, uh, you can check me out on all of the streaming sources, or you can go to my website, judycroon.com. Until next time, laugh long and prosper. <laughs>